Okay, this is the AP Calculus AB exam for the year 2013, and this is the pre response question number two. We have a particle moves along a straight line for a given interval. The velocity is given by the function you see on the screen. The position of the particle is given by the function s of t, and it's known that s of 0 is equal to 10. Okay, the first thing we want to do is kind of do a unit analysis here to figure out what's going to be what. So velocity doesn't really have any units uh, assigned to it here, but I assign units in meters per second. I'm going to change that real quick. So that's uh, meters per second, and that's a given function. So if we ask for velocity or for its scalar, uh, which is speed, we're going to read that right off of the graph or off the function. If we take the derivative of meters per second over a time period of seconds, then we get meters per second squared, and that tells us acceleration. So if we're asked for acceleration, we know, we know we're going to differentiate the velocity function. And then if we take the integral velocity, we're going to multiply the vertical and horizontal units. So meters per second times meters gives us uh, units of meters. That means that's going to be the change in position of the particle over the given time interval. And so that change in position is known as displacement. And if we just want the scalar of that, then that'll be uh, distance. So there's the basic analysis as we read the, the parts of the question here that's going to tell us what we're going to do mathematically. Notice that part A asks us to find all the values of t in the interval from 2 to 4 for which the speed of the particle is 2. The key here is the word speed because speed actually means uh, the absolute value of the velocity. Okay, I placed the function in the calculator. Notice the tricky parts here. The uh, negative on the 2 is the white negation key. And then when we put the uh, 6 fifths power in on the exponentiation, that the 6 over 5 has to be included in parentheses. And I want to solve this for where the speed is 2. That means the velocity is either going to be 2 or it's going to be negative 2. So I put those functions in for y2, y3. Window, we set our domain from 2 to 4. And then for the range, I'm just going to do a zoom fit. And notice this is the first function here, y1, which is our velocity function. And then the two constant functions, y equals 2, y equals negative 2. We're going to find the intersection of those functions next. So second trace, intersection. Uh, first curve is y1, second curve y2. Guess is that's good enough, and we get 3.128. Let's kind of record that over here. Bring the calculator back up. Okay, do it in the other function as well. So second uh, trace, intersection, first curve y1. Now we're going to cursor down to y3 for the second function. Guess. And there we get 3.473. Uh, 3.473. Okay. And so that is both values in the interval from 2 to 4 for which the speed of the particle is 2. That completes part A. Okay, part B. Our job here is to write an expression that involves an integral that gives the position s of t. So position is a function of time. And then we're going to use this expression to actually find the position of the particle when t is equal to 5. All right, as we showed earlier, position is going to be um, the integral. Actually, the change in position is the integral. So that means, get my marker here, that means s of t. is going to equal s of 0 plus the integral of the velocity function with respect to time from 0 to t. So there's our integral. Okay, remember the integral velocity is just the change in position, so we have to start with this unit value right here that at zero time has a position of 10, and then add that to whatever the change is from zero to the time t. 
And the next thing we do is we're going to do that for 5. So basically, S of 5 is going to equal 10 plus the integral velocity from 0 to 5. And when we do that, we get a value of negative 9.207. calculator. Okay, so I'm going to clean up my equation editor, clear those two constant functions, go to the home screen, and just go s of 0, which is 10, plus the integral, which is going to be math 9, of the function y1 with respect to x from 0 to 5 double check to make sure I entered what I wanted and look for the result nine point negative nine point two zero seven okay and that concludes part B okay part C find all times T in the interval 0 to 5 in which the particle changes direction well changing direction so if I have a particle here that starts at whatever value like 10 and then I go to the right, and then to the left, and to the right. My velocity, every time I change direction, my velocity is zero. So the whole thing about changing direction is the velocity is a zero. Now, there is an instance, like I'm starting at 10, I go to the right, I come to a velocity of zero, and then I continue going to the right after that. That's not a change in direction. So we're going to make sure we set uh, velocity equal to zero and ensure that there's also a sign change. So... That's what we're looking for on this problem. Find the, the times where velocity is zero and we experience a sign change. Okay, back to my graphing calculator. I checked that I have the function in. Oops, I want to check the function. That's this function we want. Window, this time the window is going to be zero to five. There's our domain interval. So zero to five, scale of one is good. And, uh, Negative 10 to 10 is good for y min and max because I'm looking for where it equals 0. So I don't need to know how high and low the function goes. I just need to see where it crosses the x-axis. So I draw the graph, and I see there's two intersection points here. It uh, looks like one at about 1 half and about 3.3, roughly. Okay, And both of those will involve a change in direction because here the, particle, the velocity of the particle is negative. On the other side of that root, it's positive, and then on the second one, it's positive first, and then goes to negative afterwards. So all we have to do is find the intersection of the function with the x-axis. So second trace, do the zero function. Left bound, I'm going to use zero. Right bound of one, and I guess a 0.5. And it tells me t is equal to 0.536. Okay. And then for the second one, do the zero function again. And this time, a left bound I'm going to use of 3, a right bound of 4, and a guess of 3.3. And 3.318. So those are our two solutions for part C. Um, 0 0.536 and 3.318. And my justification is because that's where the velocity function equals zero and it experiences a sign change. That should conclude part C. Okay, is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing at t equals 4? That's part D. The key here is the word speed. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. Here's how we're going to tell when the speed's increasing is when the derivative of the speed is, or actually, I'm sorry, when the speed is the same sign as its derivative at that point in time. So if the derivative is positive, um, which is acceleration, and the velocity is positive, then it's increasing. If they're both negative, it's increasing. And if they're different signs, then we know the speed is actually decreasing at this point in time. So, here we go. I'm going to bring up my calculator. And we're going to do the actual velocity of the particle at t equals 4. So, I'm going to turn that baby on. We're going to do um, math 8, which is, actually, you know what? We're not going to do that first. Let's go uh, variable, right arrow, enter twice. So, y1 of 4. 
So we, we know the velocity is at negative 11 something, so velocity at 4 is less than 0. And bring the calculator back up, and now we're going to do the derivative at 4. So this is where we go math 8, numeric derivative, function y1, with respect to x at 4. And notice the velocity here, or the, I'm sorry, the acceleration here. So the acceleration at 4 was like negative 22 or something. But that's less than 0, that's negative. So my answer is the speed of the particle is increasing. And it's the reason is because the velocity and acceleration are both negative. And that concludes question 2.